Hello friends, it's Miss Jennifer again, and today we're going to read a story. It's called Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons. And this is written by Eric Litwin. And you know what? The author writes the words. So that's who wrote this book. Pete the Cat and His Four Groovy Buttons. Oh, here's Pete the Cat again. I'm sure you know Pete the Cat. Pete the Cat put on his favorite shirt with four big, colorful, round, groovy buttons. He loved his buttons so much, he sang this song. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. And look at one, two, three, four. There's his buttons. One of the buttons popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Three! Four minus one equals three. One, two, three. Three groovy. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no! Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my three groovy buttons. Pop! Oh no! Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Two. Three minus one equals two. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. My buttons, my buttons, my two groovy buttons. Pop. Oh, no. Another button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Did it go underneath the ice cream truck? I wonder. So how many buttons are left? One. Two minus one equals one. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. He kept on singing his song. My button, my button, my one groovy button. My button, my button, my one groovy button. Pop! Oh no, the last button popped off and rolled away. How many buttons are left? Zero. One minus one is zero. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Buttons come and buttons go. Pete looked down at his buttonless shirt. And what do you think he saw? His belly button. And he kept on singing his song. It's all good. My button, my button, still have my belly button. My button, my button, still have my belly button. Hi, Mommy. I guess it simply goes to show that stuff will come and stuff will go. But do we cry? Goodness, no. We keep on singing. And look at, there's the buttons back. Buttons come and buttons go. And that's the end of our story. Now, let's go over and look at some of the activities that we can do with children to enhance this book. Hi friends, this is a great game that you can do with preschoolers and schoolagers for Pete the Cat and the Four Groovy Buttons. Before you play, gather about 
20 to 40 buttons depending on how many children you have and how many people or kids want to play the game. Once you have your buttons, cut out the amount of shirts that you're going to need to play the game. I picked four and I used four different colors and I cut the shirts out of felt. Then you're also going to want a die. And I made one, just used an old Kleenex box and numbers with paper. So they're going to put 10 buttons. And of course, if you're playing with younger ones, you can do less than 10. They're going to put as much as 10 buttons on their shirt. And then they're going to roll the die and take that number away. So I rolled a six. I'm going to take six buttons away. Now the object of the game is to get rid of all your buttons. And the last time, like let's say you have four. If I get a five, it doesn't count. I have to get an exact number. Hi friends, it's time to look at some great activities that you can do with Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons book. Now these activities are for any age. And again, you know your children best. So some you might have to adapt more, some you might have to adapt less. You know your kids best. Make sure you're using safety and always priority is supervision. Now fine motor skills, are using the small muscles of the arm, hand, fingers, and wrist. They help children feed themselves, change their clothing, and eventually writing, which we know is a skill they're going to need in schools. And fine motor skills, they gradually build from birth on up to school age and beyond. It's not something that just develops overnight. So make sure you're modifying activities so that it is not too frustrating for children because this is a development that's going to take a long time. So it can be frustrating for some. Now the other thing we're going to concentrate on with this book is some math activities. Now math helps develop number sense and so much more. It gives ch children the chance for imagination, flexibility, learning persistence, all things we want them to have when they get to school. And you want to try a variety of activities that encourage math. So number concept, spatial awareness, measurement, patterning, and data management. And there are so, so many activities that you can do where you're encouraging both fine motor and math. And it's so simple that you won't even know you're actually teaching them these things. So let's look at some of these activities. First of all, for our littlest learners and for toddlers, I have just an old oatmeal container. And in this container, I cut out a big rectangle. You know what? You might have something similar to this. You might have something else that you've made. Don't stress about it. Use what you have on hand. And for this activity, because we love buttons and we're talking about um, Pete the Cat's groovy buttons, we have some large buttons. And I've added some Chanel stems to them to make them even bigger. Because we know infants and toddlers are still going to put things in their mouth because that's how they figure out what the world is about. Now, the buttons, these might be even a little small for infants. These might be better, so I've modified them. And what they're going to want to do, and what you're going to encourage them to do, is simply put them in here. Now, the reason why I said you might have a container like this is because you might have a similar container that they put puff balls in. We know little ones love to put stuff in things and then dump them out. So that's one super cute and easy activity that you can do. Now, these buttons, I will tell you, I just got at Walmart. And they come in a fairly big bag, so you get quite a few of them, but you will get some that are super, super tiny. So just make sure you prepare for these activities before to make sure that there's not a choking hazard near the children that you're caring for. Now, another activity for your little ones would be something like this, and this is a sensory bag. Now, if you've watched our other videos, you know that sensory is so, so very important for all ages. 
So with this sensory bag, I took some of the smaller, tinier buttons, and they happen to be arrows. So I took a whole bunch of them. I took hair gel, again, not anything expensive. I took a Ziploc bag or whatever type of zipper bag you have at home. I put the gel, the buttons in there, and then I also did duct tape just to make it a little bit more sturdy. And really, again, you can do whatever you want. If you want to add food coloring, if you want to add glitter, anything, these make great items for not only your infants and toddlers, but also preschoolers, school agers. They love to just have something to feel and play around with. As we're going through sensory a little bit too, we've got a rice box, a colored rice. And in another video, I'll show you how to make the colored rice. It's super simple. But all I did was add a whole bunch of different buttons. And you can add spoons, you can let the kids play with their fingers, whatever you want. So simple, easy um, sensory box. Now, again with math, we have a sorting kit right here. And with this sorting kit, you probably will recognize that this is like a fast food beverage container. I happened to have it in my recycling bin, so I thought it was a great choice. Now, you might want to use a muffin tin, you might have some other cups, colored cups, whatever you decide. You can have them sort these depending on this. You can start with colors. If you've got some that understand their colors already, you can then go to shapes. Like all the round ones can go in here. All the square ones can go in here. Whatever you want to do. You could even put numbers down and they have to put like say one button in here, two buttons in here, three buttons in here, and four in there. So again, sorting however you want to do it. Now another great math activity is just making some simple cards. And to add our literacy to this activity, I did write the number as well as show it, and I did dots for our littlest learners. Again, all I did was use index cards. If I had my laminator at home, I would totally laminate these or use contact paper. That way they were a little bit more durable and good for our toddlers um, that still like to put things in their mouth. But with this, again, you're gonna say, here's the number one, show me one button. And then they can go and they can do six. And they can also do two and three. And you can also make a game of it, anything you want. Now another math concept we have is some patterns. And earlier today I asked our friend Jason if he would make me some patterns, and he did. So this is a great concept for them to try. And again, not only our toddlers and preschoolers can work with patterns, but also your school-agers. And for the school-agers, you can make more complex patterns, repeating patterns, never-ending patterns, and you can even have the school-agers do the pattern and the littler ones copy it. Or, if you want to do that, you could make a pattern and have one of our littlest learners copy your pattern. If you don't have buttons at home, here's a couple other varieties that you can use. I had my little ones not only practice their fine motor skills by tracing a circle, but then they also use scissors to cut around, so we made some of our own buttons. Again, if I had my laminator home, we'd be laminating these to make them a little bit more sturdy, but again, whatever you have available to you is great. Contact paper also works great as a laminator, and I did that so many years as an early childhood professional. So here's some bigger buttons if you wanted them to play with some of those. They could even act out the story if you wanted to do that. I also happen to have a whole bunch of blocks at home that are kind of look like buttons, so I figured I'd pull those out for my little ones as well. And with these, a great fine motor activity you can do is have them string the buttons and they can make bracelets they can make necklaces you know if you're gonna have them make necklaces just make sure that the necklace is big enough that it can come off of them and that you're supervising as well and then the last thing I want to show you um, besides the game I'm sure you saw the information about the game didn't that look fun I know that those school agers my little my little ones seven and six years old thought it was great fun and so your preschoolers would also have a great time with that game.
But the last thing for some of your preschoolers and your school agers is really teach them how to sew on a button. And in most craft stores or probably online, you can also get safety needles. And as you can see, I'm poking myself with it. It doesn't hurt like a real needle. So this is a practice needle. And this button has super huge holes. So you're really showing them how to simply go in and out. And this one did really work, I promise you, as I did it before. And then there's one of those buttons. This needle doesn't work with that for right now, but I am sure you can find some other safety needles that are a little bit smaller. But what a great skill to teach some of your school ager how to sew onto their own button. Do you know how to sew a button? I hope so. And this was just a bu buckle that I had as well. If you want to know what this is, all it is is an embroidery hoop that you can get and some fabric. So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the story. Don't forget to subscribe and come and see us again. We'll have more videos soon. Take care. Hi friends, it's Miss Jennifer. Click over here to see how we made this fun, colorful dough. And click over here to subscribe to this channel for more videos from me, Miss Jennifer.